quick one. Um, I can't do too much video today, but I'm just gonna. So here we got Chris's parts board. So let's see if we can get this this board back to working order. Hopefully, he was saying that there is a short on the PCB to the positive. So I'm just gonna have a look. Just getting the positive. If I can find a positive. Uh... Yeah, it is positive, I think. No, there might be ground. I have to check the schematic. It doesn't look like it's shorting. There's ground. Not touching positive. So maybe it might be salvageable. So I'm just gonna get my pace. Sort of a good tip on there. I'm gonna chuck a lot of flux on there and then we're gonna re-solder up all those pads. I might chuck the I might chuck the the mega back in there just to sink some of the heat so it doesn't melt the um, plastic headers on the back. I'll do that. I'm just going to resold it up and I'll bring you back. Put some AM tech. Uh, this is lead free, so it's not as good. I should get the leaded version of this, but this will still work. I'm gonna get a nice, generous boot all over the. I'm just gonna resolder up a lot of these. And that flux is working, working as it should. It's drawing out all the oxidants. We'll give it a good clean up with alcohol afterwards. There you go, the spot there has been cleaned up quite well, I'll keep going, I'm just going to pull these um, Dallas sensors out, temperature sensors out, try to not break them, oh, push them up through the back. Oh, that's in tight, wow that's a Quite fat. Oh shit. What happened there, man? No one's coming out. Look, snapped off. Hang on, I think that's, that's back to front, and I'll, oh shit, that's back to front there, the ambient one, that's the pad, so, so it's, yeah, okay, um, when I was, when I'm building those nine, four times nanos, I found, um, I put one in back to front, and it started smoking when I plugged it in. So uh, it creates a short, so maybe that's what shorted. I couldn't find a short before, maybe it's burnt out from the nano running. Maybe the uh, adrenaline running out. It might even burn out the um, voltage regulator on the nano as well. Bugger. Oh well, hopefully that's the fix, that's pretty cool. Just one component back to front. That's it. 
that's on the 5 volt rail so that would cause issues with the Here we go, it came out good. That is probably dead. The one I did before, when I had the wrong polarity, it died. So, that has come up good. Amazing what the flux does, eh? Once you go flux, you never go back, I tell you. Might trim some of these pins too. Another thing, these are scratching, I might put a, um, uh, might put a, um, insulating washer on it there. Alright. Power bank here, 5 volt output. Let's see if it boots up. And it's dead. Yeah, so this Mega Zelensky. Which is understandable. So, probably not the 5 volt regulator because this is straight 5 and it's got a bypass. And you put the USB in. Yeah, it just dies. Um, yeah, it's kind of a pity with it, about 13 bucks. I think New Zealand or 15 bucks New Zealand around that. They're not cheap. Maybe more than that. I can't remember. Um, okay, let's try 12 volts. Okay, that works. The 12 volt works, but 5 volt doesn't. Okay. Ooh, smoke coming out somewhere. Ooh. <laughs> Another one back to front. This one's back to front. Smoke's coming out of it. So that's chugging. Yeah. Oh, well, that's another back to front one there. We've got two. See? Back at orientation on those two. Yeah, guys, if you get any of these back to front, you're going to fry it for good. You'll probably fry your microcontrol as well. So that one's removed. Yeah, it's quite warm on the regulator. Let's try it again. No oh, smoke coming out. These probably shouldn't be touching negative either. That's the the drain pin is the this is drain pin on the base of a oh let's see that touching negative almost possibly. Okay. Let's see if five watt works again. Ha! Stayed on. Maybe it's saved. Maybe there's some some form of um protection on there. That's good. Boom. I think we want to fix this one. Alright, I'm going to clean it up. Put some test code on there and bring you back. Guys, <clears throat> alright, so back again, it's the next day, 
on, on the main on the t on the table here, so it's a bit easier to talk and show. So a couple of things I've done. Um, took a screw out of there because um, it was off center. Some of these are different hole patterns on the rotary encoders. So that screw was bent sideways and it was kind of flexing the board, which is not a good thing you want to do. So these here I've put on uh, insulator washers on both sides. Because what everyone's you gotta remember that most of this this top side here is five volt. This and that's five volt output from the voltage regulator on the Adreno. And it's split here and then this is five volt coming in from the power supply to power or the TP fifty that's uh, forty fifty six, sorry. What you gotta remember is if if you scratch the top of here and then you scratch the top top of there and you have a header slash, you know, standoff, that's going to short the top ground, um, top voltage plane and the bottom voltage plane which is ground to positive so it's not a good thing so I do recommend getting these insulator washers these were cut and which is fair enough if you don't have it the right size one but then obviously this is digging here and it was scratching off the um, the silk spring wow well, the you know the the green silk cover, you know, the insulator, whatever, I forgot what they call it. So that, that's, a, that's a gotcha there for you guys. Um, I just sold an, also, it was one of the um, reverse polarity protection uh, MOSFETs missing. These are just, uh, Chris uses an I, oh, what are they? I, RLZ44N, the very common logic level in channel MOSFETs that everyone uses. Um, one was missing there, so I just soldered it in with the flux and whatnot. So you can test, so you can test the the um, reverse polarity protection in channel MOSFETs on this board and the Nano one the same way as this. So you can you select it on the voltage. And you can just check what the screen here. Checking on the just to bulge what this battery is. So it's a 4.06 around there. Okay, so what happens is it's the positive here is connected to the gate, which is down on here. Which you can see under there. So that's the gate pen. So that turns it on. That turns the MOSFET on. Okay, so if it's reversed out of way, it'll be negative and it won't turn on the MOSFET. Okay, it's an end channel. And then it'll, it connects the ground here to the ground plane. So this is effectively connected to ground. So if you look on here, see so the positive is there and the negative here. So it's 4.05 or 4.06 volts. If you connect it to the negative, and the whole entire board is common ground, and that works. But let's try it on the next one. There's nothing, it's dead. But yeah, you're not going to get any voltage. But if you put on diode mode, you put the negative here, negative here, that's connecting. On the one that without a battery, it's dead, there's nothing, the, the MOSFET's not turned on. That's how you test it. So all you got to do to test it is check the positive on voltage mode and the negative, and you discharge, oh sorry, reverse polarity protection, the MOSFET's working. Okay, if you put it in reverse polarity, like this, check your positive and your negative, and it's zero. And it's working as expected. Put it here, it's negative voltage. So that's how it works, it's very simple, it's just one in-channel MOSFET is part of the reverse polarity protection. And if you put it back to front, then that TP5100 goes on, and you can also fry the, I don't think the analog uh, <coughs> the ADC on the Adreno Mega supports negative voltages. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea, but you don't want to do that anyway. It's, it's just simple, it works. Okay. So, another thing I've, I've noticed here is it's missing over here, it's missing the, um, it's the 10k resistor which goes to the, to the gate pin on. The dis, uh, yeah, the discharge MOSFETs, and that just pulls the dis, 
ah, the discharge resistor MOSFET is pulled at low when there's no power on there and then it's a 10k so when the Adreno fires 5 volts at it it goes high so it's just a pull down resistor so these are missing so this would still work without it but yeah it's good and you, it's the thing that's powered off you want all of the MOSFETs to be low off off sorry yeah low on the gate so that's off so yeah so I've seen before I've got the all the insulator washers down here it's just good protection if you do it they're quite cheap I think you get a hundred for like a dollar or something like that so it's worth getting them also put a insulating washer under there and was and you can see that it's been scratched on there so that's that's what you gotta watch out for so it's exposed copper there and that could create a short so you gotta be careful with that with another one on the top there as well no. ah, focus there you go so just basic things but could cause you a lot of issues if done that way so all the I don't have any Dallas temperature sensors Oh, I don't have nine to do that. So Chris is going to post me down some, and I also bought, also bought, twenty from um, AliExpress, which you're better off buying the ones with good ratings. But I've I've had some before, and they and they take about two seconds sometimes to read the temperature, and that just screws up with the code. So get the good quality ones, pay like two bucks extra, or whatever it is. Check the ratings, make sure it's right. I always try to pick the best ones I can find you know price versus quality and reviews um, yeah but a lot of people are going to go try to find the cheapest but that's fine but just make sure you check the ratings because you could just be getting a real inferior copy so so what he's done here he's got the JST connectors here so we and the, I can probably hook up the um, aluminium heatsink with all the discharge uh, MOSFETs on there fine that's cool um, but yeah, to get the resistor there is going to be a little bit tricky. But I can put them on the top; it doesn't matter. They're not, they're not um, non non polarity resistors, as most people should know. Let's get a chuck them on here. Alright, so it's done. Doesn't matter because the TB4056 has got the top here, so yeah, this won't obstruct it, and it's fine. It shouldn't have any chance of shorting anything or anything like that, so we should be safe. Once I've done check everything and the test and all this, I'm going to, I will give it a good clean with um, IPA alcohol and get all the flux and dirt off it and we should be ready to rock and roll ready to go should be good you can see like solder that chris uses has got a lot of flux um, so that, yeah the alcohol will get rid of that we'll re glue up all these check and test rinse and repeat cool guys i'll bring you back after this, I'll set up the laptop and we'll do some testing. All right, so I've got the laptop loaded here. It's got the plugs in the USB. Yeah, it's all right, nice and tight. Uh, ASCD test charge discharge MOSFETs test sketch. Just going to upload this. All the way up. I've got the multimeter here. It's a diode mode. Okay, done uploading. Okay, so I'll just flip it around. Ah, should, should leave that in, shouldn't I?
So, on if you're using um, if you're using uh, through hole, yeah, uh, two hundred two twenty MOSFETs, you can just um, test from ground to the top, the middle here, or because that is your drain pin and source pin is ground plane. So if we just connect this up to the negative, which is here, which is, and it should be there. Yep. So it should be two seconds on, two seconds off on this one. Yep. So they're all working. If you didn't get the beep from the MOSFET, you can still go to the ground and on these is the pins of gate, drain, source. Okay, so the first thing I would test would be the gate pin. And if you get a beep out of the first pin, you know the Adreno and, and, the, and the connection to that's fine. But you, you probably more than likely have an issue with the um, MOSFET. And then I would also check the strain and source pins. So if they're always on the whole time, which is not, it's turning on and off, you know that there's something wrong with the MOSFET or there's a, sh a bridge somewhere on the board or a short, that's a good way to test that. So, all in all, I really think that this is definitely completely salvageable board. Um, another thing to do. One good test to do before you ever plug in the Adreno power and yeah, you just solder that in is check between you check between here. That's your this is the five volt bottom. See if there's no short, there's no short obviously, but I've, I've tested this before. And check between your five volt output of the Adreno voltage regulator and a negative and see there's nothing there. Another thing to do is whack it on ohms and um, see if we've got any ohms coming in you can get up to two kilo ohms yeah so that you know it's good so some components will be will be some resistance on some components on on that plane but good test test to see if you have any shorts between positives and negatives before you plug it in again because if you do plug it in then you're going to fry stuff and then you're going to burn stuff and it's going to cost you money it's going to make it a lot harder to fix so just one thing I could say, if you're not an expert at electronics and, and you're building this, do one thing, test it, one thing, test it, one thing, test it. Do that for your first board, especially for the Dallas sensors. I can't, I can't say enough because everyone, virtually everyone that's built this has had problems with the Dallas sensors. I've had issues, but I've, I've built so many now that I've kind of worked out how to do it. The best plan of action would be Get the board working, make sure everything's fine. Solder in the ambient sensor first. So on this one will be here. And when you when you solder it in, it is quite tricky on these. There's a TEO92. Alright, and they're quite there's not much room for error, right? Get some flux, get some good quality solder wick, get a good soldering tip, good quality. I, I like to use lead solder. It's just easier to solder. Get a nice fine tip, you know, invest a little bit of money in some good gear, you know, don't try to skimp out of it, because gonna, it's going to cause the issues. And let's say I've sold this in, I would check between here, on diode mode, wrong side, check between these two pins here. So, nothing on there, and just, just hypothetically, and then check the outer ones too. So check all three pins are not touching each other. Then load the sketch, then run the t um, final sensors. And it should say, found one device, and you're like, yep, that's good, found that one. Then I'll go and solder the next one. And then, you know, start somewhere easy. Go up the back here, go, put that one in. Check for shorts every single time. Every time you solder one in, check for shorts. Solder one, check short. Solder one, check short. So if you, because if you solder nine of them, you don't know where the short is. Unless you've got a nice microscope and you zoom in, 
you know, because these are all connected together in parallel. So the center pin is parallel, the positive and the negative are parallel. So this goes for the 5 volt up the top, which goes to the voltage regulator here, goes to the 5 volt here, bottom ground plane, all common, and all, all these are connected by a 5 volt from the Arduino. So if you one of these are back to front, that's going to stop your Arduino. And if you've got a Nano or something like that, and it doesn't have protection or anything like that, you're going to fry it. It's going to cost you money. It's going to, it's not going to work. It's going to heat up. Like last video tour ago, there's a bunch of smoke coming out. Was one of these. So what happened was it was two back to front, and nothing was happening. It was shutting down the Arduino. But when I pulled out the one that I found was back to front, there was heaps of smoke coming out. It was still flux on there. You can see it get really hot. So the flux con is good because you can see smoke when things get hot. If there wasn't any flux on there, you probably would not have seen the smoke. So get it all working, you know, put a bit of flux down there if you're soldering these up. I usually try to do the outer pins first or the center pins first and then the outer pins. Bend the legs out. I will do a video in the future of how to solder the um, Dell sensors and how to test them to do it. Okay. So, what's left on here? Basically, you've got a, I've got a bridge over a, um, a little jumper. I'm going to put on the ESP adapter, and that's going to go positive, negative, and uh, RX TX1 on here. That's, and then next one, then I'll put an LCD on there to test it. Up the top, I might just put some temporary feet on here. I'll. Uh, Chris did solder these up. I'll just double check them, chuck them all in, do some run test MOSFET charge discharge MOSFET sketch to see if they turn on and off again. Yep, because you have to plug the power in. This should be fine. It's, you know, it's, he's done a good job soldering all the bits and bobs there. It's just the Dallas sensors were back to front pretty much. Oh, uh, he had a bit of issue here. I think he's just, just a solder. He probably is not, not the right type of solder he was using because. Yeah, I like I like leaded solder, and um, sometimes I think if you have solder too old, it goes off. Yeah, and the, I think modern solders have got a no clean flux in them. The old ones had like a rosin resin, whatever it is. I'm not sure, I'm not an expert, but yeah, no, I I want actually buy some better quality solder too because I'm not getting the I'm getting good joints, but not getting perfect ones. And sometimes it's good just to invest money. All right, guys. Well, I might I might do a part three. Probably do a lot of this off camera. I have limited time, and I could just do little bits bits here and there. And I, I can't just do it in one big go. But yeah, there's not much more soldering to do. I'll just solder up these little joints, mount a ESP adapter there, and we'll put the screen on. And I think yeah, should be ready to go. So, uh, I oh, still need to do the Dallas sensors, but yeah, all of those, waiting on those, so it should be done. Alright guys, that's it, catch you next time.